Welcome back, Shaliners. Today, we're gonna talk about a subject you guys have been begging for on my Instagram, Kylie and Drake. I'm gonna tell you what's true, what's not true, what's really going on with her and Travis Scott, and more importantly, what we can learn from this. I'm gonna tell you how to break the pattern of dating the same type of dudes over and over, and how to find a relationship that really actually works. But first, just wanna remind you that if you want a one-on-one -on -one session with me and wanna to talk to me and submit a question, head to my website, shallonlester.com, where you can also take some super fun quizzes to see how your social media stacks up, and shop my new merchandise line. Also, like I said, Said, follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO where I let you weigh in on the next video topic and vote. And be sure to listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every place podcasts are found. So rumors have been swirling that like Kylie and Drake, Kylie and Drake. And a lot of times where there's rumors, there's a lot of truth. If you guys are new to this channel, I used to be the editor at Star Magazine, so I know a lot about the celebrity gossip machine. I know a lot about what's true, and I also know how to spot when things aren't true, you know? Because a lot of times, people would always ask me, it's like, okay, like, are your stories real? And like, sometimes yes, sometimes, you know, less real, but a lot of times where there's smoke, there's fire. And when we kept getting tips about the same kind of person, the same kind of relationship, the same kind of events, that's true. It's much easier to be like, hmm, is this wide constellation of people, are they lying for like what reason? Because most sources aren't paid, they're not. Or is it the celebrities lying because they don't want to admit something or it doesn't work for their brand or they've got a husband at home or whatever it is. So in this case, it was a bit murky because it's like, well, neither one of them were like ostensibly lying, but the whole evidence that they were together was she, hung out with him on Halloween or was at his Halloween party. It was very, very flimsy. And it's like, they were at the same party and she stayed late. Okay, she didn't stay overnight. She, st she was there late. Like, what is she, Mormon? Like, she's allowed to stay late. Like, that to me didn't point to anything. And then I heard from a source, a source, a source, that this is actually the Kris Jenner machine. You know what you guys say. The devil works hard, Kris Jenner works harder. Actually, Shallon works harder than both of these people. Well, maybe not Kris Jenner, but definitely the devil. I don't know, devil's doing pretty well these days. It's Trump's America. So this was kind of a Kris Jenner machine. And when I dug deeper into this, because I was like, well, why? Like, why does she care if Kylie is aligned publicly with Drake? Is it, is it rise and shine? That is a theory that has been floated to me from multiple sources. Kylie, you know, she did her like rise and shine. I didn't even hear it, but I assume that that's what she did. Like walking into Stormy's bedroom and it like went viral and she put out a little clothing line. It's like, God, can this girl just not like blow her nose and have it go viral? Who gives a shit? But, you know, the word on the streets like, oh, Kylie should try for a music career. Well, who's better to do a collab with than Drake? You know, like in terms of someone who can sing a hook, it's like Drake, Bieber, Ed Sheeran, you know? And I feel like Drake's like the more logical alignment for her. So that's one reason Mama Chris could have been kind of like putting that out there because sometimes the tail wags the dog, right? I don't know if you guys have ever encountered this where it's like you heard a rumor about yourself that wasn't true, but it planted the seed in your brain and then you kind of actualized it. And sometimes it's bad and sometimes it's good. Like sometimes it's, you know, oh my gosh, I heard you're like gonna get the lead in the school play or you're gonna be prom queen. You're like, well, fuck, I am now, hey. Oh, I heard so-and-so likes you. It's like, really? <laughs> well, I like him. Sometimes it's bad. It's like, I heard you're a slut. And you're like, oh, am I? And then it seeps in. But Chris is smart and she knows that like if there's enough chatter, then the next time those two see each other, they have something to talk about. And like I said, sometimes the tail wags, wags the dog. Interesting. But then, I kept on digging. And you know what I found out? I believe that this is Kris Jenner trying to get Kylie away from Travis because Kylie and Travis are still living together. Uh, on her house, by the way. Of course, they're living in her mansion on her dime. Travis makes money, but he doesn't make Kylie money, right? He doesn't have that kind of level yet. I mean, whatever. Yeah, they're still basically playing house. I don't know if you've ever broken up with someone that you love deeply. I don't know if you've ever broken up with someone that you have a child with, but living together is not the way to get over them. Not the way to get over them. Out of sight, out of mind, that phrase exists for a reason and Kylie should listen to it. 
So what it seems to me is essentially going on is that like Travis Scott cheated on her and has been cheating on her for nine years with that side chick we talked about who was not happy about my video. Girl, you're not happy with your life. <laughs> my videos, it didn't do it. But like, so Kylie basically gave him a free pass because consequences are broken down into behaviors, right? There's nothing worse than when I hear you guys like message me and you're like, you know, I, he, I found out that this guy like has a girlfriend and I told him I'm not gonna be anyone's side chick. So we slept together two days later and I just wanna, I'm like, T.O., T.O., T.O. You know what I've learned about you? Your word doesn't mean shit. Anything that comes out of your mouth is a lie. And if I know that, he knows it because he's the one who got his dick sucked that night. I didn't. So our, our threats, it's like, this is, I'm mad and you're not gonna do this to me again. Well, based on results, you're not gonna do anything. Based on results, this situation keeps working for Travis, right? Based on results, he can get away with this with nothing. Kylie didn't rake him across the coals in public. Kris Jenner didn't like throw his shit out in the lawn. His Super Bowl shit didn't get canceled. I mean, what's been the big fallout? Some apologies? Some nights in the doghouse? Not even literally in the doghouse. It's probably nicer than most of our houses. Like, what has Kylie's anger manifested as? If nothing changes, then there's no lessons learned, right? I tell you guys all the time, he has to miss you in order to miss you. You have to be gone and removed. Sometimes a man needs to feel the weight of his decisions. He has to sit inside that reality. And if we don't allow that reality to happen, nothing is going to change. If you look at training a dog or training a child, whatever you're more familiar with, because they're basically the same thing, only one is adorable, the other one's a child. It's like 100% of the time, X behavior has to yield Y result, right? That's how you train. If you do this, you're getting put outside all night. It's for the child. If you do this, you have to get down off the couch, right? So training a man is kind of the same way. It's like, if you cheat on me, then we're not together. And by not together, you have to quantify that term, like a lawyer. It's like, well, what, let's define the terms. What does that mean? Not together is, I don't have sex with you. Maybe you don't have access to your child. You know, we get a custody agreement. You don't live here. I don't give you money. Like you have to break it down. Men are very logical. I mean, they don't act logical. They think in a logical way versus a more emotional collaborative way that women think. So you got to break this down for what this means to them. Because if you don't, their interpretation is it doesn't actually mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. But let's talk more about Kylie's new relationship. So like I said, I think this was Kris Jenner trying to put a wedge between Travis and Kylie, maybe hoping that, hey, sure, maybe a relationship will manifest and it's all gonna work out. You know, it's like the emperor's new clothes. Who knows? But Chris, you know how we feel about Drake here in the Chalantourage. I've done a video on Drake. The Drake is the worst, literally the worst garbage person in Hollywood. He's worse than Chris Brown. Would you like to know why? I'll recap it, okay. That man, Drake, claimed to love Rihanna. The whole public kissing, you know, the whole, everything he did was like so Rihanna oriented. Rihanna doesn't seem like the kind of person who opens up really easily, you know? She seems like she kind of plays it cool. She keeps it close. She's been burned before. I bet you she opened up to Drake about what really happened with Chris Brown. I don't think Chris Brown just one night snapped and beat the shit out of her in their Ferrari. I bet he'd been hitting her for a long time. He probably raped her. He probably did a lot of things. I mean, who knows? Maybe he didn't rape her. Don't sue me for libel, whatever. But like, there were some bad things going on behind the scenes, right? Bad things. And I guarantee she told Drake about it. And when Rihanna had the audacity to simply not love Drake back, like just how relationships just kind of go. She didn't have sex with his dad. She didn't throw his baby across the room. She was just like, I'm not feeling it. What did he do? What did Mr. Nice Guy do? Mr. Dorky Carlton Dance do? He made a song with Chris Brown. I honestly don't even have words for that kind of betrayal. I really don't have words for that kind of misogyny. It's so sickening. And I don't understand this like hashtag canceled culture that we're all like obsessed with. No one fucking canceled Drake. You know why? Only women get canceled. How about that? How about that? Let me put that out there. The weight of a woman's decision, 
echoes through eternity. But a man, it's like, okay. And I think the hip hop community is like, whatever. And just like forgave him because like, well, he makes really good songs. All right. Hitler was kind of a good artist. They don't hang his shit anywhere. They collect it and burn it. Do you know that's true? And then some people collect the ashes, the vials of like Hitler painting ashes. Nazis are weird. Get a hobby. So I hate Drake, right? And look, I liked his songs too. I love Degrassi. I love Toronto. And now I can't even go to Toronto because the whole city reminds me of him. But it also reminds me of Shawn Mendes. So all right, T-Dot, you're forgiven. So it's like, ah, uh, level up. But you know what? Let's pretend. Let's pretend that Kylie and Drake maybe are a thing. Let's pretend. Stranger things have happened, right? When we look at her dating history, we have Jaden Smith, right? Then we have Tyga. It's just, it's, it's like the chins get weaker and the jaws get more slack and the infidelities get more egregious, okay? So we have Jaden Smith. I actually love, I like Jaden, but he's kind of a, he's a bit of a pill, right? Tyga, Travis Scott, who had a nine year side check, and then perhaps we're rounding this out with Drizzy. <sighs> What's that saying? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. This is bringing me to my major point in this video. How can we break the cycle of toxic relationships? Because Kylie, if you are dating Drake or substitute in any, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint a broad stroke here and say any rapper, you're gonna have a hard time forming a relationship that's monogamous. That is simply not the reality of their lifestyle. How many guys get into the rap game to be a one woman man? They get in it for the pussy, they get in it for the alcohol, they get in it for that flashy lifestyle. Who can blame them? Why do you think I do YouTube? Same reasons, guys, same reasons. I'm here for the honey. <laughs> no, I'm here for the pussy. Um, so like that's kind of an unrealistic standard if for no other reason they're touring all the time if you want a boyfriend who's like there and a, a dad to your kid or a stepdad or whatever like that takes day-to-day -day rhythm you know like it's really hard to have a long distance relationship especially when you're busy and you're going here and you're going there like so you're setting yourself up for failure if you keep dating someone who's in this world where there's that norm the normalizing of drugs alcohol infidelity, being gone all the time. Like that's, you, you got an uphill battle. Same with athletes. I've dated my fair share of athletes, a lot of them. And it's the same thing. Like we would go and we would like meet hockey players and they would all have their left hand in their pocket. And I was like, why are they all standing like that? And my friend is like, Shallon, cause they're all wearing wedding rings. Like, and they don't want you to see it. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah. And I was like, oh fuck. And they never rat on each other. You know, cops are the same way. So, it's difficult for me to imagine that even if, even if Drake was like not a trash person, that he could be what she needed or what any woman needed. I'm sorry my nose is so itchy. I swear I'm not on coke. Ugh, right? Can you imagine? Can you imagine if I did a video and I was like coked out of my mind? We should do a series like another evil week where Shallon does a different drug every night. Not like meth, you know, but then, and I just like do a video or a live stream. <laughs> And that's like, this is brought to you by your local dare officer. Don't do drugs. You're gonna be as weird as Shallon on the internet. <laughs> the only drug I really wanna do is food. I just wanna eat all the time. So what can we learn from this? I get questions from you guys all the time. It's like, you know, I'm so picky when I date. I definitely have a type. Well, how's that working out for you, girl? Cause you're paying to send me a message. It's not working. It's not working. And it's really hard for us. To, like we, and we can see that in other people. It's like Sarah only dates losers. Like Kelsey only dates bad boys. Well, I don't know, I wanna, my type makes total sense. No, often our type is based on arbitrary things like how tall he is, what kind of style he has, like what his like vibe is. And it's not based on like emotional traits. Like girls aren't like, I chronically date guys who are really kind, <laughs> you know? They're like, I date hipsters, I date preppies, I date this, I date that. Same with like Kylie and the rappers, other like Chloe and basketball players. It's like, this isn't working. And I, probably the biggest battle I've had in my life is like eating. Like I just said, my drug of choice is food. And so like, I'm always like, 
if I had like 10 days to live, I would just eat. Like I love to eat and like fortunately I'm not 700 pounds, but like I, I try to keep it under control, but it is like always like the thing that I'm wanting to do, you know? And it's like, it's really hard to break a habit because the first step is becoming aware of it. And when you go, like I do keto now, so like I've lost weight and everything and I'm happy, but it took going on something like keto for me to realize how bad my habits were and how much I had normalized bad habits. Like 9.30, my ex called it nibbling hour. He's like, I could just tell you would just drift towards the kitchen and here they're like the of like the cabinets. It's like, there she goes again, it's nibbling hour. And one time I was like, but this is just what I do at night. And he's like, and it's not working. It's not working. And I was like, uh, and it was like the simplest statement and yet such an incredible epiphany. It's like, well, of course I'm going to get a latte with homework. That's just like, that's what I get. But how is that working? Well, of course I get the cross players. That's like, that's what I do. That's what I like. Do you like it? Because you're fucking miserable. Kylie, do you like dating rappers? Because this hasn't worked out so well. Like, it just hasn't. It, does, it just hasn't. One of my friends, one of my smart friends, um, I've used her as an example before because she's so smart. She was talking about her marriage and she's married to a wonderful dude. They have such a fun little relationship. They're very, very different. She's very outgoing and like, alpha like got a personality but he's an alpha too he's a quiet alpha and that's how you know he's a true alpha because confidence is quiet so like Joan I'll say her name I love you like she was talking to me about my ex and she's like Shallon let's let's say life is a race right and at every single day of your life you're like at the starting line and you're there and you're poised if someone came up to you and it's like hey would you uh would you like a broken ankle do you like a broken ankle to run this race with? No, no, you would not. She's like, that's like your ex. It's a broken ankle. We're all just trying to get through this life and we need people who are going to make that easier and better, not harder. And I was like, but I love, she's like, no, 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 no. Broken ankle. And it's like, it really is that simple. Is that not the worst? Ugh! It is that simple. Is this guy, is this pattern a broken ankle before a race? And if so, why are you doing this to yourself? Because that is the key. You are doing this to yourself. Patterns come back to one person, us, right? And we have to quantify our relationship based on results. So if you look at the results of your life and your decisions in terms of boys, it's like, is this successful? And look, you can have a relationship that's two or three years and it simply ends and you move on. A broken heart doesn't mean a relationship failed, right? It, I had a broken heart when I graduated from high school. It doesn't mean I failed out. It was time to move on. I have a hard time letting go of things. You guys probably do too, especially something that was like really significant in your life. But I also know I've had outwardly successful relationships that destroyed me. It's about how you feel. It's about what patterns were created subsequently after you got out of that relationship, right? So if you're looking back and you're like, do I have a Kylie Jenner, Khloe Kardashian-esque pattern in my past? How am I choosing this? Why? What about this pattern feels familiar to me? Independent of the pattern itself. How does the dynamics that I keep setting up in my life, what are they mirroring? We tend to date people who remind us of our most difficult parent. And a lot of people say every girl dates her daddy. They, she either dates somebody who like reminds her of her dad or reminds her of like the opposite of her dad. But like that was back in the day when most of us grew up with a dad for better or for worse. Nowadays, that is not the case. I didn't grow up with my father. I grew up with my mother. And I remember a therapist saying like, you know, the difficult parent thing. I was like, well, my dad, she's like, no, you don't have enough data there. It's your mom. And I was like, <gasps> like, I would, I would not accept it. I was like, my mom is a best friend. She's like, yeah, I mean, she probably is, but she is nonetheless your most challenging parent by default. And like my mother is a saint among humans. She's a saint among humans. But she traveled a lot for work when I was young. And like, this was like pre-FaceTime. So when she was gone, she was like gone, gone on the other side of the world, having like adventures and all this stuff. And I was home 
you know? And so I have normalized relationships. Sorry, they just keep getting in my, they're too long. I have normalized relationships where it's like feast or famine, where we're together and it's like, ah, I'm so happy. And then they're gone. Either they leave, you know, and that's the good guy fuck boy. They come in, they ghost, blah, blah, blah. Or I need to remove myself. I can't do more than four days with someone. You need to go back to your own apartment. Like monogamy has gone far enough. I can't be married anymore. So look at these relationships in your life and pull back and then pull in. Like how are they being mirrored on the macro versus the micro? And if you don't know, you better ask somebody, baby. Ask your friends. Ask a friend who has known you and known your family for a long time and say, I have an exercise for you. I want you to take a pencil and paper and just write down bullet points, the TLDR of my relationship with both my parents. And don't set this as a trap where you're gonna be an asshole to them because look, they're on team you, okay? And if they're like, your mom is a narcissist and she's toxic, hear that. Because no matter what your friend says, if it pings, if you get mad about something, that's because there's an element of truth there. It is. It strikes a chord for a reason. If someone's like, Shallon, your mom is violent. I'd be like, okay, no, she's not. So let's like, that doesn't mean anything to me. That doesn't mean anything to me. But they're like, Shallon, she loved you too much because you're an only child and it's fucked you up. I was like, Oof. I feel like I hear that. Um, so see what they say and look at that just like very bare bones analysis of your family dynamic and see if that mirrors your relationship dynamic, maybe have them do that too. Have a few people do it, get a collaborative thing. It takes a village sometimes to get woke and be like, where are the parallels here, right? Because until you understand that, you're not gonna change it. And then you're not gonna be able to weed out bad people because you know what bad people are gonna feel like? True love. Because they're gonna click on into your, into your little complex receptors And you're going to feel like completed in a way, but in a bad way. You're going to feel completed the way a heroin addict feels completed when that needle hits their veins. It's not the same thing. And yes, love should feel like that. "Mm, Like my world's whole now, but it shouldn't be like, oh, like finally, like this just taps into something so deep in me. I cannot break away from it. I can't. That's a drug response. That's a heroin response and that's a complex response. So I don't know what Kylie's patterns are. Like, I think she's got a lot of issues with Bruce and with Chris and her sisters. Like there's a lot to unpack there, but I can tell you for certain that if she keeps on repeating these characters, these these personality types in the people she dates, she is going to keep getting these outcomes. She is going to have children with men who are not committed to her. And I think she deserves better. We all do. I want to know your thoughts on this. Tell me what patterns you've noticed. Like it really, I know that you guys like will comment and say things that you've realized and other people be like, oh my God, yes, that resonates with me so hard. So share, collab. This is what the Chalantrage is all about. And also connect with me on my website. Like I said, shallonlester.com. We can shop my merch and take some quizzes. And follow me on Instagram at shallonxo where I let you vote on the next video topic. See you later, Shalloners.